Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about cytokine release syndrome or CRS and CRS is this issue that we run into in severe cases of coronavirus infections in which once this coronavirus has infected patients it results in the release of a bunch of cytokines that cause inflammation as well as activation of your T cells and B cells and basically your body goes into this panic attack, you result in organ failure and in addition to that, you get acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS in which your lungs fill up with fluid and the patients are no longer able to breathe resulting in hypoxia and death. And so this is a very big challenge, but fortunately the thing is that we have seen cytokine release syndrome in other areas. And this has happened in our CAR T cell therapies as well as our arthritis therapies. And the good thing here is that the FDA has already approved drugs for use in CAR T cell induced CRS as well as um, rheumatoid arthritis. So we do have medications, we have tools available to us that should help us in fighting COVID-19. And that is what a lot of clinical trials are going on right now. And we have some antibodies that might also help us in this process as well. And so before we get too deep into the weeds, um, let's begin with the background here and that is when the coronavirus has infected somebody the coronavirus has these spike proteins these spike proteins have receptor binding domains on them these receptor binding domains have affinity for things referred to as the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 and this is a protein it is a protein on the surface of your cells and specifically this is a protein that lines the surface of your epithelial cells lining your respiratory system. So that's the reason why it's a respiratory disease. And in addition to that, other cells that have the ACE2 receptor are T cells, your CD4 and CD8 T helper and killer T cells. And so the issue is that the coronavirus doesn't just go after your epithelial cells, it is also going after your immune cells. And when the virus goes after a T cell, for instance, the T cells will become activated because they're pissed off. And so they're going to release things referred to as cytokines. And one cytokine is referred to as interleukin-6. And so what interleukin-6 does is it will begin trying to find a interleukin-6 receptor. And interleukin-6 receptors are sometimes found in the bloodstream free floating on their own. And so what IL-6 can sometimes do is it will go find an IL-6 receptor, it will bind to it, it forms this dimer, uh, which is a two-component biomolecule, and then this dimer will go on and basically bind onto some of your respiratory cells, such as cells lining the alveoli, and it causes vascular permeability, as well as other issues that result in fluid buildup in the lungs. And so within your alveoli, which are basically these little um, I have a thing right here. It's basically like a little balloon. Um, as this dimer, this IL-6 plus IL-6R binds onto your alveoli or other cells, it causes fluid to begin to build up. And the purpose of these alveoli is to maximize surface area to get as much gas transfer as possible between you and the air. And so as you get fluid buildup due to these dimers of IL-6 and IL-6R binding onto the epithelial cells in a respiratory system, as you get that acute respiratory distress syndrome, uh, and that's where, because you're getting fluid building up in here due to the leaking that is now occurring due to IL-6, it's harder and harder for you to breathe because there's less surface area for your lungs to conduct the gas exchange that you need to do in order to survive. And so there's one reason why it is very challenging for us uh, and we're doing the best we can to figure out how do we begin to reduce the levels of IL-6 in these severe cases of COVID-19. In addition to that, IL-6 can also just bind right onto the surface of T cells. And when it does that, it's going to activate those T cells uh, as well as, and those T cells will go on to activate even more T cells and B cells. So basically you get this rapid immune response and your body is in this mode where it's trying to fight and do everything it can to uh, contain this infection. And so things are essentially overreacting. And the key phrase in medicine that we use a lot is the devil is in the dosage. And the issue is that while you need some IL-6 and you need you know, every single one of these things we're talking about, IL-6, 
uh, is needed in order to tell your immune system to scale up, but the issue is that your immune system can overreact. And overreaction is sometimes even worse than no reaction at all. And in the case of this overreaction, you've got this immune system that is going in hot, very, very amped up, and it can result in doing a lot more damage than good and actually end up killing people. So having an immune system that is super activated isn't necessarily a good thing when you're trying to fight the coronavirus because you need to maintain normal functions of your organs. And so what tools do we have available to us to actually help us with fighting um, this disease? And so the one that a lot of people are going after right now is how do I begin to reduce the effects of IL-6? And the way we can reduce the effects of IL-6 is through something referred to as an IL-6 antagonist. And antagonists are a type of drug that will basically mimic the structure or it will mimic the region that has that affinity. So the IL-6 receptors, so these things right here, the blue things that we were looking at earlier, um, these IL-6 receptors, if we can bind something onto them that basically negates what they're um, doing, so if this, just take one of these, if this uh, antagonist, which would be this thing right here, was able to bind onto the IL-6 receptor, IL-6 would not be able to bind where it previously would, and therefore you would never form the dimers, and because you've never formed the actual dimers that create the issue with the acute respiratory distress syndrome, then that is one way that we can help patients get off the ventilators and begin to reclaim normal functions of their bodies. And in addition to that, we're able to get the antagonists onto the T cells so that the IL-6 that otherwise would have stimulated more T cells is no longer able to stimulate those cells and therefore we're able to basically help your immune system get to an effective baseline arousal or activation because the worst case scenario is we don't want your immune system to be so activated that you're losing control of everything else in your body because everyone's losing their head and screaming and then in addition to that we also want to stop uh, re causing or creating those dimers that are resulting in fluid buildup in your alveoli and your lungs. And so we have tools to do this. Um, these antagonists come in the form of antibodies, or some of them are in the form of antibodies. Um, there are others that uh, sometimes we use stem cells in order to secrete things that are able to help calm your immune system down and basically make those IL-6 antagonists as well. Um, but right now, um, toxilizumab is one of the FDA-approved antibodies. It's from Roche. Uh, as well as Chagai, and this is a drug that was used successfully and demonstrated efficacy as well as safety in patients who have the T-cell activated or CAR T-cell activated CRS syndrome as well as rheumatoid arthritis, and so we're able to take these medications, these tools we already have available to us, and use them in new ways to actually help save lives. And so um, that's going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Please stay safe and wash your hands, and I'll talk to you next time.